Hello everybody, welcome to another Nicaragua video. Today I want to talk to you about how to communicate with Nicaraguans. And I'm not going to be speaking about English or Spanish, I'm going to talk about some of the issues that always come up when foreigners interact with Nicaraguans. Because there's some recurring patterns that if you can know about these ahead of time, it's going to make it easier to talk to people. Whether you're speaking in Spanish to a Nicaraguan person, or you're speaking in English to a local who knows English. These things are going to apply, okay? So the first thing to keep in mind is that in general, us foreigners, we speak way too much, way too fast, way too quickly about way too many different things. And it, it, it's, it's too much, it's too much, really. And even for me, I've been in Nicaragua for four or five years, and when I meet with foreigners now, I have to sort of brace myself. I have to put on my listening ears and make sure I'm, I'm ready to, to listen a lot because they're gonna talk really, really fast. And it's like they're eternally ca ca uh, caffeinated, you know? Like, it's, uh, it's just kind of how we are. We're very overstimulated. And I, I, I could get into why that is, but this video is not about the why. This video is about the communication issues that happen between foreigners and Nicaraguan people. So the main thing, yeah, is that us foreigners, we, t we talk too much, too fast, and we don't give the Nicaraguan person time to, to listen to us. Because here, in general, um, things are just a lot slower. And it absolutely does not mean people are slower, like, mentally. They're very smart. They're, they're just as smart as foreigners. There's no intellectual difference. It's just people here are slower, like they're taking their time. They're going to listen to each word you say. Probably. In general, people are more... Mm, they're just more conversational. Whereas us from the US, we're like, we want to talk at you. Like, talk, yeah, yeah, talk, 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 talk. And it's hard to get a word in. You know, in, in US culture at least, and maybe a bit in Europe, you sort of have to uh, sort of interrupt, you know, in order to say something. Whereas in, in Nicaragua, it's not usually like that. People will actually stop talking. They'll take a break to give you a chance to say something. Whoa, sounds like a novelty. <laughs> so that's the first thing to understand is that in general, we overwhelm the Nicaraguan people. Us foreigners, we talk too much, too quickly, about too many different subjects all at once. It, it overwhelms them, okay? So, so try and use less words, it really. It, it's gonna make things easier if you just talk less. Keep your mouth shut, and then it's gonna give the Nicaraguan person time to hear what you just said and actually listen and respond to it. Um, that's going to help you a lot, okay? The next thing to understand is about numbers. Because Nicaraguan people, they're not used to numbers in the same way that people in the West are. Uh, people from the US or Europe, numbers are everywhere all the time. Numbers are used to convince you. Numbers are used to show your family that you're doing well. You're like, oh, I'm earning this. I'm doing that. I worked for this many this. It's all numbers, right? Whereas here in Nicaragua, uh, Use of numbers and especially things like percentages in normal conversation is absolutely not common. So if you're regularly saying like, yeah, 50% of the time, 80% of the time, people aren't going to intuitively understand that. They can think about it and figure it out, what you mean, but they're not used to it. People in Nicaragua don't use percentages. We, they don't use a lot of numbers. Um, so if you start using big numbers, like if you're like, you know, in the United States, there's 340 million people. Nicaragua is small, just six, like anytime you start using numbers that are really big, like millions, billions, it, don't even bother. Like really just use less words, don't talk so much, talk slower, don't use numbers because you're going to confuse people and they're not really, again, it's not that they're, they don't understand numbers. They, they can. It's just that it's not normal here to use numbers a lot in conversation. So if you do that, it's weird. Like it's like confusing for people because they're not used to that. Okay. So the second thing is numbers. First, words, too many words. Don't do that. Second, numbers. Avoid the numbers. Now, the third thing is sort of more for you as a foreigner. You should understand that People in Nicaragua are very direct, like really, they, they don't really beat around the bush that much. So like, 
say that you're overweight or you're really thin or you're really pale or your skin's really dark or whatever, you'll have people walk up to you and be like, you're skinny, you're fat, you're this. They, they, they'll, they'll literally, it's like, ah, plant is green, tree is tall. Like, <laughs> they're, they're just gonna make an observation about you. And if you're from the West, you may be uncomfortable with this because we're used to people, it's sort of, you don't talk about someone's body unless you're trying to insult them. <laughs> for the most part, really. Like, yeah, maybe you're giving them a compliment. But for the most part, you don't talk about... Like, to call, call someone fat to their face is kind of like... In the West, that's not that common. Whereas here in Nicaragua, yeah, that, that's absolutely common. <laughs> People have no qualms, really. Nicaraguans generally don't have many hesitations in making comments about people's physical appearance. Me, for example, if I walk around in the street, I'm just called flaco. That, that means like thin person. And, and in other countries, that's like offensive to talk about someone's body, especially if you don't know them, right? But here, it's literally just anybody could call me that, literally. Like I could go to a bank and they'd be like, hola flaco. Like it's like, it's just a kind of way of saying hello. And again, in, in, in Nicaragua, it's, it's sort of normal. People, Nicaraguans are kind of hard to offend. They, they can say offensive things, and they're, they're usually not that polite, like, with their words. But they're much harder to offend, actually offend, and then be mad at you for what you said. Uh, that, that's much harder to do than, than, like, us from the West. We're more easy to take offense, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, the next lesson is sort of more about the Spanish language itself. Um, something to understand about Spanish, at least compared to English, is that it's harder in Spanish to reference things accurately. And especially, like, okay, if you're talking about, like, pure dictionary educated Spanish, that's one thing, but that's different. People don't speak that way. People speak in, like, slang, right? And more of a, a simplified kind of Spanish. And in general, uh, in, in English, for example, I can say, I... I'm doing this, and this person did that, but don't confuse that person with me, or you. I can use all of these references in a couple sentences and make it clear who I'm talking about. Whereas in Spanish, there's not, people don't use references accurately, really. So they'll just say su, or basically they'll say your, but it means, in Spanish, su could mean you, it could mean theirs, it could mean a lot of different things. And this ambiguity often is quite confusing. Like when I interact with people um, and I'm speaking Spanish trying to purchase something, there's often confusion because they'll be like, ah, sold. Like they literally just say sold. They don't say, I sold it to you or I sold it to them or I sold it. No, they just say sold. And you have to interpret, ah, they mean sold to someone else. Or, if you're lucky, ah, okay, yeah, sold, I sold it to you. But you see what I mean? There's a lot of vagueness, and that can be quite confusing. And some people, uh, Spanish speakers in particular, are, are really hesitant to use names and direct things. So they're always speaking about the world in a very sort of vague way, like, ah, uh, they do this, these do that, but they'll never name people, you know? So it's it's a little bit confusing. And that's just something to keep in mind when you are uh, speaking in Spanish or people are speaking in Spanish to you. Just keep in mind that it, the, the harder part, the trickier part, maybe this is just for me, isn't so much the words, it's understanding who or what the person is actually referencing. I can understand what they're talking about, but people tend to not say exactly who they're talking about. So it's confusing. They'll just say like su, right? And that could mean you're the person they're talking about. It could mean the person they just said in the past sentence. That's who they're talking about. It, it, it's, it's, it's confusing. <laughs> so in general, you have to be aware that references in Spanish can be quite general and vague. So some of the most common miscommunications come from misinterpreting the reference. So you understand the meaning of the sentence, like, ah, he needs water, but you think you need water, but really it's that other person who needs water. Or it's the cat who's thirsty, and you didn't know the subject of the sentence was the cat, 
but the Nicaraguan person was looking at the cat, so you were supposed to know that that's who they were talking about. Not you, not them, not their son who's behind them that you're looking at and talking to. You know, you really have to pay attention to figure out the reference points. And then the final thing I'll talk about is related to, um, is related to basically if you want to make a Nicaraguan smile or make them feel happy or just be supportive of them, then the best thing you can do is speak Spanish with them. Even if you have horrible Spanish, like you butcher it, that even if it's that bad, it'll make them laugh. But people in general in Nicaragua, they feel like unrecognized by the world. And so when you speak their language to them and you're a visitor in their country, they feel good about that. Like really, most it's the easiest way to cheer a Nicaraguan up. Like especially if it's someone you kind of know, you can just say something dumb in Spanish and they'll laugh. Like really, it's like just because you're a foreigner speaking Spanish, it makes it amusing to them. And it's also the easiest way to show them that you sort of care about their culture and you're not just here to fuck around and you know spend money and shit and leave. Like you want to actually try and speak to people a little bit because they don't expect you to be fluent honestly Nicaraguans won't expect you to know any Spanish at all so like I can go up to somebody and like greet them in perfect Spanish and I, I don't know perfect Spanish but I can greet I can do the basic interactions really well right and they will still assume I don't know anything because Nicaraguans are just used to foreigners not knowing any Spanish. So that's why I want to end this video at that point. If you're trying to interact with a Nicaraguan, really the best way to be on their good side is to speak Spanish with them. Really. You don't even have to have long conversations. Just try. That's all that matters. And especially if they can see you're struggling, it almost makes it better. Like, it, it, it's... It's more endearing to them to see that, oh, you're not even fluent, but you're trying anyway. That's so cool. Like, that's kind of the attitude most Nicaraguans have. And in general, it's really easy to talk to Nicaraguans. Nicaraguan people are really, like, um, open to conversation in a way that people in the U.S. and in the West, like in Europe, we're more close-minded to strangers in particular. Like, here in Nicaragua... I can go just like sit in front of my house and people will like walk by the street and sometimes like my neighbors will be like, ah, hey, what's going on? And they'll like stand there and talk to me for like 10, 15 minutes. And I could go in the morning when people sit in front of their houses and go talk to a neighbor and it's totally normal and acceptable. Even if I was just some random stranger, like I could walk up to somebody and be like, hello, how are you? That kind of thing. And it, it's... It's normal, like, people here are, are pretty talkative, and they, they want to get to know you, especially if you look, like, weird, or you look like you're from somewhere else. They'll always be like, ah, where are you from? That kind of thing, you know? And, and normally they, they, they have a, a, a guess in their head. They're like, I think this person's from Germany. And then they ask you, and they're like, where are you from? And they're sort of trying to confirm, based on how you look, where you're from, because they have a guess in their head, right? So that's sort of a game that a lot of people, not of Nicaraguans play, so to speak. It's like they see a foreigner and then they're like, hmm, I wonder where this person is from. And then you ask, where are you from? And you learn and then you're like, ah, I was right. <laughs> so that's just something else to keep in mind. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you want, you can consult with me. I do consultations for $20 per 30 minute session. Uh, usually people talk about Nicaragua, uh, earning money online, online business, sometimes about how to sort of squeeze yourself out of the system, so to speak. That's something I, I specialize in. And also people who are coming to Nicaragua but feel a little bit nervous or anxious and they just want to talk to someone who is living in the country who kind of like can tell them how things are a bit. You know, those are the kinds of people who tend to book the calls and get the most value out of them. So if you're interested in that, all you have to do is go to calendly.com slash Jack Dermot Pittman. You can click on the link in the description of this video, or you can just go to the website Calendly and type in everything, and you'll go straight to the scheduling page. And it's just $20 per 30-minute session. You just give in some information and pay, and then it books it into my calendar, and I see it, and I show up to the meeting. It's pretty easy. You don't need to, like, reach out to me and 
do a whole bunch of communication beforehand. You can literally just book the call and I'll show up at the time that you specify, okay? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.